Hello, Mellow Yellows. This Thursday, we're taking on the issue of the top five sitcoms of all time. I figured now would be a good time to build up the anticipation for my Connect series, which will be coming out on the 20th. And I really... Like, I'm, I'm doubting it will... But, anyway. I'm sure mostly everybody understands what a sitcom is. It's a situational comedy. And, to be honest, for the sake of my enjoyment, this is my top five. So don't expect facts. If it was facts, it'd be boring. Like, I, I know a lot of these have been facts. Like, at least the top five gaming series. But it, but it's like, this would just suck as facts. It would, it would have to be like, big sitcom after big sitcom. It, it, no. As per usual, there are some honorable mentions. The only current honorable mention is Hot in Cleveland. And honestly, I don't know why I enjoy this show so much. Something about all these ladies hanging around. Not to mention, it tackles some serious things. I mean, the one girl has a brain tumor, dating a celeb who kills himself. Kills. We also have Everybody Loves Raymond, and as the commercials state for the show, the episodes still seem fresh. It, it might not be the funniest show, but I just find myself enjoying the show even if I've seen the episodes before. The final honorable mention is The Inbetweeners, and this show is amazing. Sadly, it got cancelled after like two seasons, I think, and it's British, so sometimes it's hard to follow, but the show is absolutely hilarious. If you have Netflix and some free time, this show is definitely worth watching. Just saying. Anyway, time for the actual countdown. Number five, King of Queens. In my opinion, this sitcom breaks so many rules in its execution. For example, very rarely is the plot solved by the end of the episode. Typically, the show creates a problem. You see Doug and Carrie attempt to solve it in horrible ways. Like, nothing gets solved, though. For example, there's one episode where Carrie accidentally steals an iPod. She ends up at a church during a blizzard, and the pastor, not knowing she stole it, praises her for buying it and giving meals to families who made it. She goes to return it and gets the girl who is working fired, not to mention she ends up causing a fight between the employee and her boyfriend. The show ends with moments like that, ignoring the, the quote-unquote family lesson, or learning in general, instead focusing more on the hilarious failure. Not to mention, I think they are an amazing couple. The show is very well written, great actors, and... There are just so many hilarious episodes. For number four, I have Roseanne. And I really don't know if it should be number four or number five. Roseanne is just such a great show, up until the final season, of course. There's a constant threat of being poor throughout the entire show, again, ignoring the final season. Very few shows have the ever-present threat of poverty. Most shows, it's like... Like, you don't know what they do, but they're always rich. I mean, hell, even in King of Queens, he's a UPS driver and there's never like an issue of money so it's like eh. even if even if other shows did i don't think they'd do it as well as roseanne they're like lower middle class but at the same point the show just hurts the children are all different and even roseanne's family each member is different for example i mean what sitcom from the 90s has a gay character as an actual important character let me also add in that the show is typically really funny with Roseanne being so rash. Number three this week is King of the Hill, because yes, I include animated sitcoms. As a kid, this was this show was my favorite sitcom. It, it, you have the classic theme song, some of the best characters, you know, Hank, Bobby, even Peggy's pretty good. You have episode progression, which is important to me. Like not like the characters get older, but like things happen in one episode and they matter in the next episode. Another sitcom I can think of that does this is Friends. They they do it pretty well. Not to mention, the show is beyond funny. Even the pilot is pretty great. I mean, when, when he's in the store trying to buy a hammer, you know, it just... Plus, we have Tom Petty as a voice on the show. So many signature jokes, you know. Yup. Mm-hmm. Dag nabbit, Bobber. I, 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 I'm not good at imitations, so... This is another show I would check out if you haven't seen it. Number two is where I'm going to have people going, what the hell? American Dad. When I first saw the show, in my mind, it was a ripoff of Family Guy. But it's not quite. It's the same guy, and the shows are different. Family Guy's humor is like stupid humor. Like, you don't have to be smart to get a lot of the jokes in Family Guy. Even if you don't get the joke, they have a sketch to where you can get the joke. It, it, like, it's not... I, I'm not insulting Family Guy, by any means. I'm just saying, like, it's more like laid-back humor. You don't have to think watching Family Guy. 
you know, some of the gags run too long. I mean, how many times is he fighting the chicken? But American Dad is more of a huge satire that'll pay homage to whatever it wants to. Like, Roger doesn't need to be there most of the time, but his disguise as an overall character make it work. The only character I really don't like is Klaus, but that's because he never gets any episodes. Like, typically he's just kind of there. You have a great little mini-series. I, I, I guess they stopped doing it with the Golden Turd. But all of the characters are so extreme that it works. I regret not having watched the show sooner. That being said, I hope the show continues hanging in Family Guy's shadow for as long as possible. Everybody knows Family Guy. Not, not as many people know American Dad. American Dad, classic show. And number one this week is Family Guy. <laughs> no, it, it's not. Maybe if it got cancelled after the first season, it'd be an honorable mention. Speaking of which, Freaks and Geeks is, is of course an honorable mention. I don't know why I forgot to put them. Now, number one is best sitcom in my opinion. That 70s show. Of course, like Roseanne, the, the last season just... So much change. It didn't work. The first seven seasons are amazing. I've seen every episode probably like four or five times, and I still laugh my ass off to most of the jokes. None of the characters are like extreme on the smart scale, you know, either smart or dumb, aside from Kelso. And, and I think that's one of the things I like about it, is that like, on most shows, it's like... Like, every character has episodes where they're smart, and episodes where they're dumb. Except for Kelso, he pretty much is always dumb, but each character is decent at something, and they're, they're human. You have classic sketches, well, running gags, I guess, like the circle. I mean, it happens in every episode. The uh, double talk, where you have, like, typically it's, like, Jackie and Donna, and Eric and Hyde. Not to mention, you know, you have probably the best sketch ever is the one on Eric's birthday where Red and Kitty leave. And then Red's like, what's the worst that can happen? And Kitty's like, I'll tell you what could happen. It's, in my opinion, I, I, I've probably seen that sketch like 15, 20 times at least. And it is still, like, the most hilarious thing. Me and my sister can quote it. Like, it's just the greatest thing. The characters are amazing, and personally, I feel like I can relate to all of them, depending on the episode. The show is hilarious, and really, it, it stands up well. The first season focuses more on the time period, but after that, it becomes the perfect show, with all the seasons building up to an event at the end of the season. Like, you know, you have, like, a whole season, I think it's the fourth, or, no, it's the third season, where they build the whole season up to Eric and Donna breaking up. And it's like, you don't really think about it, because every episode they end up getting, you know, they're okay at the end of the episode. But then when it finally happens, it's like, well, you know, we should have seen it coming. Granted, as with Roseanne, the final season really sucked in comparison. It, it, it's, like, I sat and I watched on Netflix the first well, not the first, the entire show. And, like, the first season, I don't think the first season is the best, but it's it's a really good season. And then gradually, as the show progresses, it, it's, get, it gets better. And then you kind of have the eighth season, where it's like, what the hell? Everything you know about the show is, like, thrown away. You know, oh, the main character's Eric. Well, not this season. You know, Fez can't get girls. Not this season. You know, Kitty is anti-drugs. Not this season. It, it just... All of that being said, comment your list, and uh, peace out, home skillets.